يا كن عبد ويا كن استعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح المغلق الخاتم لما سبق الناس بالحق بالحق والهاد الى صراطك المستقيم وعلى اله حق قدره ومقدره العظيم وردي الله تعالى اصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم يا همه الشيخ حضر لنا بهذا المحضر وانتعت في بنظره تعت لنا بكفا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we present Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again to have given us an opportunity to gather in this house uh, in order to worship him and to remember him and to seek for his forgiveness and to uh, send salutation upon our master Sayyiduna Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask him to send salutation upon his family his companions and the followers of the companions and the followers of the followers of the companions and every single person who follows them until the day of judgment. Um, Alhamdulillah, I will try to be very short today because we also started very late. Um, as we try to um, complete this short uh, uh, book on uh, on on the, the the handbook on the Tariqa Tijaniya, uh, basically, which contains the litanies of the Tariqa and uh, an explanation of the brief history of the Tariqa, as well as the um, the adab and the etiquette in which one should observe to try to do the uh, the awrad and the wirt of the of, of the Tariqa. Um, last week we spoke about the, we were still on the introduction um, and um, last week just to recap in the introduction we were talking about the, um, the, the, the foundations and the principles of the tariqah uh, which is uh, istighfar to ask Allah for forgiveness and, uh, and, and secondly is the uh, uh, the principle, the second principle is to say La ilaha illallah and uh, to remember Allah by saying La ilaha illallah and also the third principle which is uh, Salat ala nabi that is to to make Salawat of uh, prayers upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we uh, uh, we spoke about various ayats and, and many a hadith that uh, where Allah Azza wa Jalla and also Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encourage and, um, and in, in some instances even instruct uh, us to to uh, to regularly do these three components uh, which is the istighfar and uh, to remember Allah by saying La ilaha illallah and also to send salutation upon our master Sayyidina Muhammad Mustafa yes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, we also spoke a little bit about the Shaykh Amara Tijani radiallahu ta'ala and who's seen of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how that uh, in the Sunnah it is mentioned uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said he, he who has seen me has truly seen me for the shaitan is forbidden to take my form. So if you see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether in a dream or in a wakeful state, uh, you have truly seen the truth. In another hadith, man ra'ani faqadara al haqqa whoever sees me has seen the truth. In another hadith, man ra'ani fasayarani, who he who has seen me, he will soon see, see me. So the ulama say, if you have seen him, meaning in a, in a, in, in a, maybe in a dream, it means in reality you, 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 you will see him. So these are all different narrations that comes in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim and other hadith uh, collectors. But uh, Imam al-Ghazali also spoke about, uh, uh, we, we mentioned about Imam al-Ghazali's uh, narration uh, that he discusses in his kitab Mishkatul Anwar, uh, the need for light with regards to 
the uh, the idea of being able to see prophethood. Uh, I mean, to see uh, to see things that uh, they are, they may they may be considered part of the rape but when you see them, you see them through the, the what you call the soul, because the soul is able to do that. And that, and then he spoke about how when you are when you are sleeping in a dream, you will see things that maybe are in a different world, but yet you are in you are, you are in this world. However, for those people who have uh, traversed the path and have reached uh, certain stages or makamat, mm-hmm. they get to a position where even when they are waking. The, the, there is no difference in the vision they see whether they are sleeping or they are not sleeping. Um, and this is, is what uh, Imam Shah Hassan Sisaradala quoted this section from Imam Al Ghazali's Mishkat al Anwar. But I don't want to go too much into details because we discussed this at length last week. Uh, so the next section, uh, this is mainly just to, to remind us and just to refocus uh, 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 with regards to the. Um, the that which we have in our in, in in our hand, and also to to re-establish that connection uh, with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As as we mentioned, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is the only person that we deal with. He is the one that told us that he saw Jibrail alaihi salam. He is the one that told us that there is Allah. He is the one that told us that there is Akhirah. There is the Jannah, there is the Jahannam. All the things that are unseen. He's the one that has told us this. So our Islam really in reality is actually connected to him and to him and to him. Because if he told us, if we didn't believe in what he said, we would not know about Allah. We would not know about Jibra'il alayhi salam. We would not know about the Quran that we read. And that's why today, you know, some people say, no, we, we follow Quran and Sunnah. By that they mean to bypass Rasulullah as if Rasulullah is some kind of a, a different uh, uh, object that must be discarded. They speak as if Jibreel actually came directly to them, but that is that, that, that is not the case. We know how Rasulullah started. Um, when he gathered the people in his first khutbah uh, in the, on the mountain, he told the people that, you know me, I never spoke lies. If I told you that there is an army behind this mountain that is about to crush you, what will you do? They say, of course, you, we are al amin You are the trustworthy one and a siddiq and the, the sadiq, the, the, the truthful one. We know you as a person of truth. And then he said, in the same way, how you know me, I am telling you, Jibra'il came to me. Uh, leave worshipping all idols and only worship on Allah. And the rest became history. From this... Rasulullah became a, a, a separator between uh, Jannah and Jahannam. If you believed in him, you enter paradise. If you disbelieve in him, you enter hellfire. And that's why the Prophet said in the Shaykh Amara Tijani who said in the narration narrated by Imam uh, Sidi Sukairish in Kashf al-Hijab, in the same way how Rasulullah is a separator between the fire and, and, and Jannah, I am also the separator between the fire and and, and Jannah. He who love us, he enter paradise, and he who, who hate us, also he enter hellfire. Now, the the conditions of the uh, the tariqa is the next section that I just want to highlight here because I am, I see that I'm just deviating from the book. Um, the I will read from the text from where we left off. So it's. The conditions for initiation into the Tariqa Tijaniya. This oath is taken with the intention of continuous practice until death. From a a muqaddam uh, with correct permission or authority. Um, so this is the a condition, a, a conditions for which a person gets initiated into the Tariqa. Is that a person must take it with the intention that when they take it, they will practice it until uh, until death. And also, it must be taken from somebody uh, who is referred to as a muqaddam. Muqaddam is basically a word that is used to mean that uh, 
you, a, a person has got uh, a permission to transmit the will of the tariqah. And that's the, the basic meaning of a muqaddam. But also muqaddam has got another meaning uh, in a sense that uh, the word uh, um, muqaddam comes from the word qaddama yuqaddimu. Somebody who has been put in front uh, in, 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 a, in the absence of the sheikh. So, so that and uh, Sidi Muhammad, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al Hassan Sisi, when he was here, he explained this principle very well in one of his uh, public lectures he gave, and he said, when the sheikh comes, then he, everybody else is just like uh, the same. So it's everybody else is just like the same. But when the sheikh is absent, then he sort of plays that role, and that's why it's, it's called uh, what you call muqaddam. But so being a muqaddam as is seen in many places, doesn't necessarily authorize a person to be like, you know, how people interpret it now, like big sheikhs and all these things. Um, a person must must have uh, correct permission uh, uh, and, and authority to be able to give the, 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 the awrat, because this Islam is transmitted through the authority of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that uh, and it is alive through it, and it must have an unbroken chain that connects one to him. And then the uh, the the next condition that is mentioned here in the book is that uh, is to observe the five prayers in congregation if possible. So this is the a, 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 a condition. Um, uh, so basically, a person must observe the five daily prayers and in congregation. There's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said. When three people live in a desert or in a place, they must pray together. For if they pray individually, very soon shaitan will isolate them and take them one by one and destroy them. So this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ indicates the importance of jama'ah, the importance of not of uh, not be no, no, not to be comfortable in just praying uh, what you call praying alone. As we know, also the prayer that is prayed in jama'ah is got uh, more than 25 to 27 degrees than the one that is prayed alone. But when you go to, a, where, when even you, you live in a place where there is a regular jama'ah that takes place, even when uh, there is a hadith that also that is narrated that even when a person gets there after the jama'ah is finished and they, and they do their prayer individually, he gets the reward as if he has prayed in jama'ah. And this is part of the message from Allah because uh, the intention is there that that you wanted to actually pray in Jama'ah but due to some unforeseen circumstance you were unable to make it but nevertheless you still went there. So so th this is proof that you do it for the sake of Allah, you not do it because you want to be seen by somebody to say hey, this person is always present in the masjid. No, <laughs> all our doings must always be connected with uh, 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 with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next condition mentioned is that one be kind to, to your parents uh, Muslim or non-Muslim. So one must be kind to one's parents, whether they are Muslim or they are non-Muslims. And this condition is uh, is quite strong. Uh, Sheikh Mai, when he was here, he says, the one who does not respect his parents, even if he takes this tariqa, they will never benefit in this tariqa. Because uh, this condition is, uh, it's, a, it's a basic condition. And so tariqa seeks to put a person into sirat al mustaqim especially in this day and age especially in the last age you find it there is a gross disrespect of children against the, the, the what you call the, what you call the, the, their parents so this tariqa seems to uh, seeks to to reverse that and to to identify people who are on the sirat al mustaqim you will find them by observing this kind of uh, uh, behavior that is to to respect the parents whether they are Muslims or they are non-Muslims. And then the next condition that is uh, is discussed is uh, don't neglect the weird. So when you take the weird, don't don't be lazy. Don't read it sometimes and read it maybe read it sometimes and don't read it in other times. Try to be punctual with it and try to uh, try to read it. Try to make time for it. Yes, it's understandable. I remember. Uh, some time ago, after we prayed Fajr, and uh, we used to sleep in the Tarqawi Center on Shatba, I was here in the initial days, and we used to rush after Salam, <laughs> because we would normally shower before Fajr, because you know the traffic from here to 
to draw back is very heavy from Pretoria. So we used to shower very quickly so we can go. So one day, Shaq, he, he, he turned around, he said, where are you going? I said, no, I'm going to, I guess, I well, what about, did, did you send salutation upon the Prophet? And I said, I, I will do it on the road to the car. And then he said, you don't have time for the Prophet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one must try to, to sit, it's not to say he is not permissible, it's permissible to read, to, to perform your will while you're walking. It's permissible to read it even while you're driving. Allah says in Holy Quran, those that remember Allah while standing, laying down on the side, is permissible. But the weird is a very serious matter. One has to have a specific etiquette because when you when you read it, like Shah Hassan says in Ruhul Adab, Allah said in the Hadith Qudsi that Rasulullah said, Allah said, Anna Jalisu man dhakarani ila dhakarani. I am the sitting companion of the one who remembers me when they remember me. So in that particular way, when you remember Allah and you you you, you become and you remember that Allah is your sitting companion, how are you gonna read the weird, the remembrance of Allah, and then your face is looked the other way or is looked in a in a different direction? It's like you have a serious matter. Maybe a president needs he, he, he needs to attend to it. You take your application, you put it in front of the president. Now the president says, okay, explain, what's your problem? I want to sort it out for you. While you explain and then you start playing with your nails, you start uh, looking through the window or you start doing some other things, but you're busy trying to explain your problem. Mm -hmm. So picture that, 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 uh, that position when you are remembering Allah. How, what, what kind of etiquette should one uh, try to observe? Um, the next uh, uh, condition is avoid visiting other awliya, living or dead with the intention to seek spiritual benefit from them. And, and this is one of those conditions that may be uh, they're quite severe and quite serious uh, to, 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 to visit another wali that is obviously not from within the tariqa with the intention to seek spiritual benefit. Yes, you can visit uh, with the intention to greet and with a, because it's another Muslim brother or sister, if he's a sheikh, uh, but not with the, with the intention to seek spiritual benefits. Um, the student must not practice any other tariqa other than the, the, the tariqa tijaniya. When a person takes this tariqa, and maybe a person was practicing a different tariqa before, uh, uh, that person must leave whatever they used to practice before and only practice the tariqa tijani. It is impossible to practice this tariqa and combine it with any other tariqa. Um, the, the next condition that is discussed is that to believe, surrender and submit to all that is said by the sheikh, right? Because the sheikh is the one that he, he, takes, he, he takes the role of the Prophet So when you come to the sheikh to say, I need help, and the sheikh will then give you instruction to say, okay, go read this awrad and go do this and go do that. It's like he's acting on behalf of the Prophet So in that way, one should try, you should, you should, should have this kind of adab with the sheikh in a way that he must believe in the sheikh, he must surrender in him, and he must submit to, the, to all that is said by the sheikh. This is part of the conditions of, of, of the tariqa. This tariqa is not a tariqa of, I just want to try it out, or I just want to see what's going to happen. There, there is no such thing. When you take the tariqa, you take the tariqa because there is a serious issue that you have that you need to resolve. And the goal of the tariqa is to, is to purify one's heart, is to, is to reach the presence of Allah, is to enhance your understanding in, of, of Islam, and also to get closer to uh, what you call to Allah. All of these are all part of the goals of uh, what you call of, of taking the tariqa. So, and therefore, this is not a matter of you can pick and choose what you can take from the sheikh or not. You have to believe. That's why Imam Sheikh Hassan said in the Ruhul Adab, you have to perform the four takbir of Salatul Janaza four times on the whole universe and everything inside it and only focus on the Shaykh because he will guide you step by step to that which you, you, you need, to, you need to, to reach. The next condition that is described is to love Shaykh Amar Tijani This is alluding to the earlier quote I mentioned from Sid Ahmad Sukairij 
to love the Sheikh Ahmad Tijani radiallahu ta'ala, of course, to love him, you can't just love him without knowing him. One should try to read up about his sira, how he started, how he got this weird, his jihad that he, he, he engaged in, in, uh, in spreading the message of Islam and how he transformed the lives of people and, and his family background, where he came from, how he, he came to be, how he, uh, um, how he came to be, and, and his meeting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of this, once you start learning about him and knowing about him, and then you begin to love him, because the love of the Sheikh is the petrol that propels the murid to, 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 uh, to, 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 to progress. I remember Sheikh Bai used to say, um, if, if a person does not have love for the Sheikh, he cannot benefit anything from that sheikh, even if that sheikh loves that person, even if that sheikh does everything that this person needs and they give everything to this individual. This individual will never move, not even one step. What will make him to move is his own love to the sheikh. That is what will cause you to propel. So that is, uh, they say it is one thing to take the tariqa, but it is another for the tariqa to take you. And that is dependent on how much you, on how much uh, love you have for the sheikh. So it is important to to know this sheikh Amr Tijani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Like Sheikh Hassan said, I mean Sheikh Ibrahim said, فَلْيَكُنْ لَكَ شَيْخَانِ شَيْخُكَ فِي الْفِي الظَّاهِرِ وَشَيْخُكَ فِي الْبَاطِنِ Let there be two sheikhs for you, your sheikh in the ظاهر and your sheikh in the batin. فَشَيْخُكَ فِي الظَّاهِرِ هُوَ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ your Sheikh in the Zahir is, is the book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger. And your Sheikh in the Batin, who is Sheikh Ahmad al Tijani, who is Ahmad al Tijani, and he is with you wherever you are. So the relationship we have with the Sheikh is a, is a spiritual relationship. That's why some people ask him, Oh Sheikh, what should we do when you, are, when, you, when, you are, when you are dead? He replied to them, He says, I do not die. Because the, the, the relationship that you have with him is a spiritual relationship which uh, transcends the, uh, this, earthly life, or what you call this earthly life. He is always av available in the barza. Um, and his mother is continuously flowing and guiding uh, 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 the awliya. The next uh, condition is respect the brotherhood of the, of the Tijaniya and don't cause harm to any of them. That is a very principal, uh, what you call a crucial point, and is, is among the conditions of the tariqa, is to respect the brotherhood, meaning uh, try to to respect uh, all the different uh, members of of, of the of, of the tariqa, and and try not to cause any harm, uh, what you call uh, uh, from them. Uh, try to keep good ties with them. Try to avoid. Uh, harming uh, any of the, the, the members of, of the tariqa. Of course, this does not mean that you neglect other people belonging from other tariqas. <laughs> but basically, this is more so as, as uh, specific because uh, tariqa is a, uh, tariqa is basically a, an organization or a way of organizing a group or a community that uh, that follows a specific. Uh, advices of a specific sheikh in the same way how you have uh, uh, you, you have uh, some people follow uh, Imam Abu Hanifa in terms of how to worship Allah some they will follow Imam Malik anhuma, how to worship Allah some will follow Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal how to worship Allah so so and, and of course you will know when you when you read the books of the of, 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 of fiqh you will see all the fuqaha the ulama they always they kind of respect they show each other but sometimes also you find once in a while you'll find someone disrespecting maybe a member of another <laughs> madhab but that is part of extremism in islam we need to we need to accept the differences within ourselves and uh, but at the same time respect one another and know where you do where, where your standpoint is when you make your salah whether you do uh, you raise your hands or you keep your hands hanging that is a, a different matter <laughs> Um, but we still need to respect each other because all come from the same source and that source is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The next point is to respect all awliya Allah. So irrespective of whatever tariqa the awliya come from, respect everybody. In fact, uh, the advice is even given here. 
not just only the awliya Allah, just, just about any human being, one should try to respect. Because some awliya Allah, Allah make them known among the people. Some awliya Allah, he hides them. So you never know who you're dealing with at any point in time. Rather, just respect everybody. And Shaykh Ibrahim spoke about this, that in, the, in, the, in, the, in the one of his letters in Jawa Rasai, where he calls the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, uh, a, a person will come on Yom al Qiyamah, Allah will say, O oh, son of Adam, I was hungry and you never gave me food to eat. And then a person will say, But you are the Lord of the world, how can you be, need, be in need of food? And then he said, Don't you know a servant of mine so and so came looking for food you never gave? Had you given him food, you would have found me with that person. Right? The hadith is long, I don't want to go through the whole hadith. But basically, the, the idea is just to respect everybody and then you'll be on the same side. Um, love all, the next condition is love all Allah's creations and be nice to them. Like Shaykh Ibrahim said, if you be nice to all the creation of Allah and you, 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 you oppress a chicken, right, you will never be counted among the Muhsineen, right. So try to be nice to the whole creation of Allah, humans or non-humans or anything. So try to be, to be nice. And then the, uh, the next, um, <laughs> you know, this one is, a, I don't know how to place this one, but basically it says the enemies of the Sheikh should also be your enemies. I don't understand it very wrong. <laughs> don't understand it very wrong, but what it means basically, one needs to pay attention because sometimes there are some people that um, yeah, Allah makes them to work against the work of the awliya Allah. So recognize those people and know them accordingly, deal with them accordingly. Right? And some, sometimes you find them, they, they, they may be even Muslims. But it doesn't mean that uh, uh, you treat those people as enemies because they are still followers of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it just means that one we needs to be careful how they, they, they deal with, uh, with, with, with such people. And it's always better to deal with people at a Sharia level. You know, if he's a Muslim, you greet him, you see him, if he, he's sick, you visit him, even if he's your enemy, even if he does anything. Rasulullah he visited a Jew who was not even a Muslim, he used to put thorns on his pathway. And the, the day she did, never showed up, she asked, where is so and so? And then they said, today she, she was sick. And Prophet went to, to, to ask for, for, for uh, went to visit her. Right. Now, what about maybe another uh, what you call Muslim brother? So that we must always keep in mind, and because sometimes when uh, people hear these kind of things and then they, they say, that's Bismillah, I can't talk to you anymore. It's it, it's not like that. And the next condition is to make the Hajjud at night. So making the Hajjud at night uh, is one of the conditions of this tariqah. May Allah help us. Say the Aisha radhiyallahu narrates a hadith and he say. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to stand up in prayer until the cracks will be seen from his skin. And he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, but Allah has forgiven you all your future and past sins. Why trouble yourself with this? And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, should I not be a grateful servant and a grateful slave? So this is a... Uh, this tariqah is, is, is the path of the Prophet ﷺ, so one needs to follow the Prophet as much as, uh, as possible. You want to attain the higher stages in paradise, enter paradise sh shoulder to shoulder with Rasulullah, try to do as much as he did. <laughs> and that is, uh, and then uh, uh, we will try to, to get to that joint. And then the next condition is to keep making the sunnah before and after the farah prayers. So with every salah, uh, whatever the Prophet Sallallahu prayed before a Farad Salah, try to pray it as well. Whatever the Prophet Sallallahu prayed after the Farad Salah, try to pray it as well. Right? So, so that is, uh, uh, is, is, is one of is the conditions of this tariqah. And then the, uh, the next condition is that be truthful. So uh, have truth with you. It never lies. The Prophet Sallallahu say, uh, I mean in the Salatul Fatih we say, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu he is Nasir al haqq al haqq He is a helper of the truth by the truth. The Prophet ﷺ never helped the truth by falsehood. So we should try to emulate uh, that example and be truthful in our affairs. And then the next condition, he says, don't boast about being a Tijani. It's something that is very common. Somebody takes the weed and goes all out and says, hey, now I'm a Tijani. So what does that mean? What does it mean to another person? Because take, taking a tariqah 
It's something that is supposed to be hidden between you and the sheikh that you took the tariqah from, right? Because that sheikh is helping you to purify your heart and to fix your mistakes and your faults and everything. And they monitor you step by step every day regularly as you meet as, as you meet the sheikh regularly. Then he will tell you, no, don't do this and do that. Then over a period of time, you find that you, you, you have became a better human being. So now to go around posting and say, now I'm a Tijani, it's like going to a hospital and say, hey, I've got this sickness and I've got that sickness exposing yourself. So that's basically what it means. And then the last condition that is mentioned here is that don't give initiation into the tariqah without permission, meaning without being a muqaddam in the tariqah. So you don't give a, a, a weird without uh, without having a permission to, uh, what you call, to do so. Um, I must say that uh, these conditions, they are they, they are mixed. The conditions of the Tariqa Tijaniya are, are divided into two. They are they are the Shurut al Lazima and the Shurut al Kamila. Our Shurut al Daruriya or Shurut al Kamila. They are the conditions that are necessary. That if you break these ones, then that's it. Your Tariqa breaks. You have to renew your build. And then there are those that. They are the shurut al kamila, they are the conditions that uh, they, they are called al kamila. Meaning, if you if you don't do them, uh, you, you still maintain your tariqa, but it means that uh, you have not reached the the, 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 the the conditions of the perfection of the of, of the conditions of the of, of the tariqa. So these are the, the the different kinds. In this particular book here, as I, I was I was reading them. Uh, as I was reading them, it, uh, it seems as if the way they were compiled, they were compiled, they, they, they mixed all of them, uh, what you call it, together. For example, if you don't make the tahajjud, does it mean now that you are no longer, <laughs> you have to renew your tariq. <laughs> so that, that's a condition of, uh, of, of perfection. Uh, so that is, uh, then uh, this was the last section, inshallah, next we, we will talk about the history of uh, Sheikh Ahmad al-Tijani, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where, how he started this journey and his lineage, uh, his family life, and, and and the work that he did for Islam, and so that we can understand him better, and also try to to to, to emulate him also because it's very important to know what the Sheikh did because if you don't know what the Sheikh did, then you will never do the things that he did, right? If he worked for Islam and he helped the people. We should also try to be like that to help Islam and help the people and, and do all these things. Now, now people just take tariqa and then they start focusing on just reading the oral of the tariqa. Now they don't know what is the meaning of what they're doing, and, um, and, and 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 that's why it's good to always remind ourselves about what the tariqa is and what tariqa is not, and, and also to, to to know about the lifestyle of the sheikh and try to emulate his lifestyle because his, his lifestyle is the lifestyle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and that is all that is required of us as followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to, is to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is much easier to follow the Prophet when you have an example in front of you and, and, and that is the role of the, of the sheikhs and that's why we have Alhamdulillah we have uh, Shuyuk which is uh, trying to help us to, 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 to understand Islam and practice it in the way the Prophet Sallallahu would have practiced it if he was living in our time. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, subhanakallah, wa bihamdika, wa nashadu wa la ilaha ila da staghfiru wa natu ilayka, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammadin al-Fatih al-Mawlid, wa al-Khatimu al-Masawak al-Nasib al-Haqq al-Haqq, wa al-Hadi al-Asiratika al-Mustaqimu ala adihi haqqa al-Qadariha al-Mubdari al-Amin, Subhanallah, rabbika rabbi al-Izzatama al-Sifu wa salamu ala al-Mustaqimu al-Hamdulillah wa